Um, I'd like to um, start with the challenges that we're facing now um, in Turkey, and this will be in the eyes of um, the um, social society, um, society um, civil society participants of the network um, that I belong to, my foundation belongs to, and in the eyes of um, thousands of counselors that I come across through our projects in, um, in the foundation that I work with. Um, if I would like to go back to the case that Mrs. Jenny referred, the case of Thomas. If Thomas was in Turkey, uh, first of all, the teachers or some of the teachers would disagree whether this was abuse and that it had to be reported. Because even though legally there are mandated reporters, some of them are not aware that they are mandated reporters. So there would be maybe um, some disputes between whether they should report or not. And had they reported, there would be uh, a dispute against between their uh, school principal because in um, although there is a good attempt at the uh, Ministry of um, Education that there is um, the tracking of, of violence against children, no school principal wants to report that in his school there is violence. So <coughs> actually the reports show that there is very little violence in our schools in Turkey. So um, there would be, um, and if the counselor uh, would like to report, as many of our counselors whom we encounter um, state, that it would be so difficult to really pass the case on to someone. Because if they reported with um, the former Department of Social Services or currently Ministry of um, Family and Social Policies, um, let's say um, local uh, branch, they might say that this might be in the hands of um, maybe the prosecutor or it might be back, referred back to the school crisis team or if it was more of a severe case it has to go to the um, child police. So lots of people complain that there is a very chaotic um, system in, when it comes to reporting and and then we can also imagine that you know the the instant uh, protection of the child um, is also very sporadic. It depends on an individual based uh, whether that um, you know social worker is very dedicated or that um, the child police or the counselor is very dedicated to ensure that child doesn't fall in through the cracks. So actually, as Mr. Spratt's presentation shows, we're still in the phase one of individualistic um, child protection system, where it really depends on very much an individual efforts, whether you know we can have very um, dedicated people who've really gone through um, the experience of making protecting child emission to uh, uh, overburdened uh, workers or teachers or counselors or health professionals that really um, do not know what to do. So there is um, the, the challenge of uh, recognizing, challenge of identifying, and the, as my colleagues here um, earlier said, one single entity that really owns. Legally, yes, we do have the system, and luckily, um, some of the good news is the newly formed Ministry of Family and Social Services hopefully will um, embrace that ownership and really try to, throughout the country, form uh, the mechanisms of uh, single um, ownership and then referral system uh, and protection system. So right now the system is very chaotic to um, service providers and actually um, child protecting uh, and child welfare system. Intra-agency and inter-agency collaboration. So the multidisciplinary work 
it, that acted so well in Thomas's case is again, it might have been very good, depending on the individual efforts, or might not even be there. Um, because the roles, the duties are not very clear. So everyone may be stepping on each um, other's foot, or they may not know what to do, and they may not know their limitations. So we still need um, these to be clarified. There are now recently attempts for, at the local level, multidisciplinary teams to be reformed and, um, and also uh, that they go through training of monitoring and uh, also be active um, disciplinary um, teams. Um, accountability, as I think we all emphasize, is so important. Um, we did have a system, but it really didn't work well. So we really failed a lot of children because there was no accountability. So intra-agency, in the agency accountability, and then uh, accountability of the state. So for that, it uh, has to go into the governments to ensure enough funding and ensure that um, the mandated training of um, all the uh, workers that have uh, contact with children. Um, I think um, the collaboration with civil society should not mean that, um, that the governments wash off their hands and give the responsibility to civil society. It's their mandate to protect the children. And if they can see the civil society as equal partners where they can collaborate in the best interest of the child from um, policy making to service uh, coordination, that would be great. And I think that's my um, hope. So um, at the local levels, if these teams can create these safe nets, um, that would be great. But unfortunately, I think um, civil society um, NGOs and some organizations are seen as a threat by the governments, or maybe, maybe at least in the previous and maybe um, today's uh, governments. So um, I think if we can shift the view that how can we be um, the eyes and the ears of um, the child and, and also raise the voices of children to get into um, so not just NGOs who do um, you know projects, but also NGOs who are really raising um, you know the, the voices of children. Um, lastly, I'd like to just say yes, there are some movements in the achievements. So, for example, our new network um, again a network of um, um, that UNICEF had, uh, you know, um, helped us to form is taking lessons from the past and hopefully it would be um, more functional in monitoring and advocating. Um, and then um, there is, we're move, moving from more children's rights, as, although we still need to um, still inform about the children's rights, but to child protection. Uh, there are some, again, uh, trainings and projects uh, through international fundings mostly. Unfortunately, very little local funding is funding these projects. Do I have one minute? Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I think, uh, again, I think my colleague, uh, Mrs. Petrovic, um, shared the dilemma that we all do. How do we change attitudes and beliefs because at the um, local, uh, from starting local level to the public level, um, the, the people who are going to implement the law, they need to themselves look into their attitudes and beliefs, and I think that's the biggest obstacle. So I think we can learn lessons uh, from the past and uh, pass it on to our um, common efforts uh, with civil society and um, um, public partnership. So I think, thank you.